Hi, I'm Tony Gondola from the Mexico Museum of Space History in Alamogordo, welcoming you to the next edition of Stories from Space. Enjoy! Neil Armstrong's Small Step for a Man was a very simple and human act that had hundreds of thousands of people and years of design and development behind it. Some of that work took place right here in southern New Mexico, specifically at Launch Complex 36 at White Sands Missile Range. Up to this point in time, all manned spacecraft provided an escape system that would save the astronauts in the event of a catastrophe on the launch pad or during ascent into orbit. Rockets did, and still do, blow up. How these systems work is fairly simple. In the case of the Mercury spacecraft, a small solid fuel rocket mounted on a short tower just above the capsule would fire and loft the capsule out of the fireball and high enough so that the parachutes had enough time to deploy and bring the capsule down to a survivable landing. The Gemini system was a little bit different depending on a combination of ejection seats and booster abort modes to keep the crew safe. The escape system slated for use in Apollo was very similar in concept to the one used in Project Mercury. However, the Saturn V was a much bigger bomb, and the Apollo command module was a larger and heavier spacecraft than the tiny Mercury capsule. This required an escape system that was much more powerful and sophisticated than anything yet designed and flown. It was a system that would have to be thoroughly tested before Apollo could be man-rated. That brings us to one of the most impressive artifacts you'll see at the Museum of Space History, our Little Joe 2. The original Little Joe 1 was designed by Max Faget and NASA and built by North American Aviation in 1958. Its original purpose was to provide a cheap and simple booster for testing various aspects of the Mercury spacecraft. Little Joe 2 was based on that design. Built specifically to test the Apollo launch escape system, our Little Joe 2 stands 86 feet tall and is 12.8 feet in diameter. It's powered by a combination of Thiokol and Aerojet solid fuel motors. These motors could be used in various combinations and burn times to fit the test requirements. In addition to two ground abort tests, Little Joe 2 flew a total of five times between August of 1963 and January of 1966. The second launch carried command module boilerplate BP-12 and was the first successful abort test using the Apollo launch escape system. The third flight replicated the pressures and stresses expected during a Saturn 1B abort. The fourth test in May of 1965 was supposed to be a high altitude abort test, but it turned out very differently. As you can see in the video clip, Little Joe started an uncommanded roll a little less than three seconds after liftoff. Reaching a roll rate in excess of 335 degrees per second, the launch vehicle broke up at 12,400 feet. The automatic abort system reacted to this event by triggering the low altitude abort sequence instead of the high altitude sequence planned. The launch escape system worked as designed in sensing an actual abort situation and acting accordingly. If there had been a crew aboard, they would have survived. The last test carried the first production Block 1 Command and Service Module, CSM-002. This was a tumbling high-altitude abort test and was completed successfully, completing the man qualification of the Apollo launch abort system. As a significant part of the Apollo testing program, our Little Joe 2 stands as a proud testament to the many small steps needed to be taken right here on Earth to make Neil Armstrong's historic small step possible. Well, that wraps up our latest edition of Stories from Space. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to check this location for future updates and information. And for now, stay home, stay safe, and stay curious.